Hey guys, thanks for joining me. Today I just wanted to go over some of the different ways that you can color tone an image. Uh, I know everybody's got a different technique and there is loads and loads of different ways of doing it in Photoshop. So I just thought I'd go over some of the ones that I've used in the past and some of the ways that I prefer doing things now, um, just to give me a bit more flexibility to come back and adjust certain things. So with color toning, a lot of the images that I do color toning on already have uh, certain certain color differences in them. So this one, uh, model Scarlet Duggan, this was shot uh, with daylight, but also using yellow gels and blue gels. So it was already color in, in the image to begin with. So that really helps when you're doing color toning. It does give you a base to sort of go from. Uh, so the first technique that a lot of people use is to just create a new layer and they just fill it with, with a color. Uh, you can certainly use a color that's within the image, if you like, um, just and just fill that with the color. And then, the moment I'm doing the shadows, uh, all the sort of the darker areas, as you see, I color picked some of the some of the blues in the darker areas here. Uh, I just change that to soft light, and then just lower the opacity of that um, quite low, and I'll just bring in some color into the shadows. Uh, create another layer, and then you want to be looking at doing some color adjustments on the on the highlights so again just come in there um, fill that and then choose maybe darken or multiply something like that and again just really drop the drop the opacity of that one and that'll just bring in bring in some color into the into the highlights um, so that's great but it's sort of not too flexible in that uh, you know obviously I can raise the opacity of each of those layers but just in terms of the the colors and that sort of thing I mean I, you know you suppose you could go in there and uh, sort of add a color overlay to that if you weren't happy with the color afterwards and you could you could do some flexibility with that um, and then adjust that from there and that sort of thing but it's it's just it's still not not as as flexible for me and um, and what I like to do um, so I just group those a second and just uh, and just turn those off um, another way of doing it is uh, which is quite, quite popular is just to do it with a levels adjustment layer on top so just create levels adjustment layer and then go into the different different channels in here okay so the blues you know you can bring the bring the blues up in there um, and then drop the drop the yellows down in there. Okay, uh, and already that's it's pretty much getting a similar effect to what we did a second ago by just using those those two different layers, um, just by going in here and simply just moving those sliders. So quite quickly you can do that, and it's very easy to come back to you know, and, uh, and adjust afterwards and that sort of thing. So very sort of simple. Um, Way of doing it, uh, and it's up to you. You know, you can keep going uh, with that. You can maybe come in and add uh, a bit more, a bit more in there in the red channel, um, just to bring that out. Take some more reds out. Um, just bring a, greens into the shadows there as well. That sort of thing. So very flexible, um, almost too flexible because you keep coming back to it time and time again. And um, but w with any color work, uh, on that note, I probably would just do do some colorizing and then. You know, never flatten it straight away. Maybe just leave it for a couple of hours, go away, make a drink, whatever, come back, or even the next day. I know that's definitely something that I always do. I never ever um, send a client a file uh, straight away after I've done any color work on it because your eyes will will adjust, uh, and you know, anything will look good if you look at it for long enough. Um, so that's the levels. Uh, you can also do it with the with the curves. Uh, so again. Just, just in here. Uh, some people find the curves uh, harder to use. Some people find them easier to use. Uh, it's just, it's just personal preference. And I think, to be fair, on some images, I, I, I find it easier to use the levels just because it's, it is a little bit simpler. I know exactly what I'm getting in. But whereas the curves, I think if you want to be a bit more experimental, I think you can, you can get away with um, experimenting a bit more, pushing things around, and you can end up getting, getting some results that perhaps you weren't expecting that were. That are actually better, so um, it's definitely definitely worth having a having a play with the curves. Um, 
And again, I'm just still using that same principle of I've got the blues and the yellows within that image that I originally shot. So I am still working on that on that premise. Um, and you know, here I'm in the blue channel, uh, this is the shadow point, I'm bringing blues into the into the shadows. Um, and then this is the yellow point up here. I'm bringing more yellows into the highlights. Okay. Um, again, you know, you can come in here and tweak with these. You've got the green channel, more green more magenta um, so on so you can you can really push push that around um, and then the red channel more red more cyan um, and again you've got the, the black points down here so moving that will add more cyan into the into the actual black points okay uh, so yeah so that's it that's, that's the curves you've got your, you've got your levels you've got your curves um, and then you've just got your your straight color overlays and um, layers there. So there, you know, the curves is probably curves and levels is probably the one that I, I use the most. Um, but there is one one other option that, that you can use that uh, I I used to work in a print lab many moons ago and used to get some smart asses that would come in uh, with LAB color mode. So just let me show you what that is so if i'm just going to i'm just going to duplicate this 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 document so i've basically got two copies okay um and this one the one that i was just working on there was in rgb okay um so i've just duplicated that document and i'm just going to change this duplicate doc document into lab color so these guys would come into the um, print lab and they'd uh, come in with their images saved in LAB color mode, lab color mode, and uh, you know they'd be they'd be really proud because LAB color mode is supposed to be the largest color range um, possible, um, and apparently it's supposed to have a larger um, gamut if if you, if you like than the human eye. Not terribly sure how they how they prove that but um obviously yeah, as you know with screens and monitors and certainly with printers and that sort of thing it's uh, it's it's just never ever going to render anywhere near that that size of um gamut or color range so even when they brought it in we still had to convert it back to rgb but the benefits when you're in lab mode is the fact that when you go on to curves you don't have red uh, green and blue channel you have a lightness channel Okay, um, pretty self-explanatory, but that, uh, but that just affects the brightness of the image or lightness of the image or gamma, if you like, um, just straight up and down. And then we got the A channel, okay, uh, which brings in magentas, bring it up, and the greeny cyans, bringing it down, and then the B channel, which bringing in the the yellows. And then bringing it down brings in the blues. Now, one thing to—that's probably the, one of the most important things to bear in mind with the LAB channel mode, uh, LAB color mode—is that using the A's and B's does not affect the brightness. Okay, so it does mean that it gives you a lot more flexibility when you're playing around with the with the images more so than I'm just going to switch back to RGB um, when you're in here in. RGB mode with the with the curve, and for example, you go into the green channel, you bring it up. Okay, when I'm adding the the greens there, I'm also lightening the blacks a lot here. Okay, conversely, if I'm taking it in here and I'm adding in magentas because I'm dragging that curve down, it's still affecting the brightness of the image. So it's actually made the image darker. Okay, even though really all I wanted to do was add magenta to the image. Okay, so if we just come back to our lab image okay and uh, i'll do the same thing again here so i'm adding magenta but i'm not actually brightening the image okay and i'm adding those greens and cyans and i'm not actually darkening the image so that can sort of help you when you're sort of playing around and just trying to experiment with, with, with different things because you you can push it a lot more um and you still have a usable image <laughs> Should we say if you start if you start really dragging these sliders around in RGB, it is really going to get some crazy effects. Um, whereas with this one, uh, you can you can really 
push it around and get some and get some different effects that perhaps you wouldn't have wouldn't have normally tried. Um, so let's just have a look if we just uh, bring these in here a little bit of magenta in there, bring that down, and come into our B channel. So yellows and blues, and want to bring in some. That's it. That. Bring in some blues up there. That's nice. Okay. Cool. So you can really push push those around, um, and once you're happy with that, obviously just have a play. Um, once you're happy with that, we're still in LAB color mode, so it's not really useful for anything at, at present. I can't I can't put it on the I can't put it on the web in its current state. I can't print it out. Whatever is going to happen is going to pretty much have to be converted back to RGB. So you can either stamp merge visible or you can just flatten the image and bring it back into our RGB file. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to turn off that. I can't put it in there. So now we have our now we have our lab file document on top in there like that. Um, and you can you can lower the opacity on that, or you can play around with that as you wish. Um, but it does mean it's just a, it's just a different way, it's just a different variation of playing around with getting some different different color styles and different color toning. Um, personally, that the, uh, the you know the levels and curves are, are great, um, but there are there are occasions where that lab mode just does tend to give you almost like a like, like a richer color, um, it's almost like a more saturated color, and it's easier to get that saturated color in LAB mode because you're not affecting the actual lightness of the image. So when you're pushing and pulling the colors in RGB, you are also affecting the lightness and brightness of the of the image. So sometimes it can be easier to do it in LAB color mode. All right, guys, I hope some of that was um, useful. Definitely have a play um, by all means you can check out some other tutorials of mine on my Facebook page for any for any quick ones or for any more in-depth ones then by all means head over to jkicksphotography.com thanks very much guys